Yeah, no, my wife got a new car. She was overdue for one. Uh, I always, uh, I always ripped her for uh, the, the the car that she had because it was just well the, the battery for the key was it CRV or whatever the C- Honda CRV, which it did good. Uh, it lasted point A to point B, but it just the uh, point A to point B. The uh, seats were just so like tiny, like you had like no red leg room. Uh, her key fob was dying. She wasn't willing to replace the battery. And then uh, you do realize that it's just a, it's just a watch battery. Yeah, <laughs> like you just pop uh, the back and. And then so you guys bought a new car because the fob was running out of a battery. No, that wasn't it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, it was up to like 180 thousand miles, so it was getting close to being. That's not a lot. What do you mean? That's not a lot. 180 thousand miles. Yeah, that's almost 200 thousand. That's usually that's kind of the rule of thumb for deciding to get like a new car. Nah, bro. That's not a lot of miles. What's a lot of miles? A lot of miles is like 300,000 in my eyes. Okay. There's tons of cars out there that run perfectly fine over like 250,000 miles. My sister's car has like, I don't know, close to 200,000 miles. She's never had a problem with it. Hmm. Okay. Well, I look at cars different than you guys too. You just said point A to point B and that's just not how you... That's not how I buy cars. Well, so. I'm not getting Lauren anything more than <laughs> something that is something like that. Yeah, I mean, even buying a sedan, you can still have, or like buying an SUV. Like if you bought a Tesla, you're not just buying a Tesla because it's a point A to point B car. You're buying a Tesla because you're like, I fucking love this Tesla. You know what I mean? That, I mean, that's why I want a Tesla. Right. That's what I'm saying, though. Like, you could have still bought, Lauren could have still got a car and been like, um, you know, you guys look at cars different than I do. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so what kind of car is it? Uh, Chevy uh, Equinox. I think that's what my mommy drives. Is it white? No, it's a uh, charcoal gray. Ooh, that sounds nice. Dude, it's pretty sharp. Does it shimmer? No. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna sh- it's gonna sh- show that dirt. But uh, I got a black yeah, car and it sh- shows it really bad. She's freaking out about all the features it has, and I'm just like, yeah, this is. But this is what normal cars like have now. Yeah. So yeah. she's just like, this is all like new to me because she used to have to like physically turn on her lights when it was dark out. Like it didn't. Have- yeah, I've never had a car that doesn't do that. My car's a 2015, and I still have to turn on my lights. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, that's <clears throat> it's still a normal feature where cars like just turn on lights now. But mm-hmm. yeah, I've never had a car where lights come on automatically. The GTI, if when I get the GTI, it will. But so she was like freaking out about that. Uh, not freaking out, but like, oh, that's nice. I'm like, yeah. yeah that, I mean, this nice. is. She saw the light sensor at the front because you can you can see them. They're on like they're usually on the dash, mm-hmm. and she's like, what's that? I go. Oh, that's a light sensor. I know you haven't had a car that had one yet, but that just detects the light to tell you when the your dash should adjust its uh, brightness and when your lights should come on in the uh, on in the front. The, in the front, yeah. Mm. And then she thought she got me with a real big. She was like, "Yeah, but I still have to turn on my bright, so it's not that modern." I was like, "That's by design. Yeah, that's, that's suppo- a reason. You're, you're, <laughs> the human is supposed to control that. <laughs> you shouldn't uh, be driving." Yeah, everywhere with your brights on anyways. No, like, it's oh, a, <laughs> that is controlled by the human to avoid blinding somebody else. The car cannot. And causing an accident. Yeah, so. That's a safety reason. That was that was funny when she said that. I freaking love now her. Now she probably has airbags. Well, I think the CRV has airbags. It has airbags. Um, but, uh, backup camera. Yeah, she, has, she finally has a backup camera. I still think that's she... the fucking dumbest thing that they've ever put in cars. I hate them so much. I They're convenient do. as shit. Don't get me wrong. And I will have one in my new car. But I fucking hate them so much. Yeah, well, she she pretty much never backed up in her life. How uh, do you pass a driving test? Like, how does America have the worst driving test? You shouldn't be able to pass if you can't parallel park still or re- reverse just down a straight line. I mean, it's just, 
I feel like it's sa- a safety hazard because if you're in a parking lot and you can't reverse out of a parking spot, it's just as dangerous if you can't reverse into a parking spot. You know, I, I think, too, it's it's definitely the way that we're taught. Because the way I was, when they just That's say, like, they, oh. They do a shitty job at teaching. Oh, yeah. Like, back up, you do, like, you know, this. I I back up all the time. And I pretty much back up my truck for a fucking living. Mm-hmm. And the method that I've been taught how to mirrors. back up. Yeah, with mirrors. You're supposed to use your mirrors. I've never, dude, I. It, dude, if you do this, when you do this, what you're doing is you're blocking out an entire side of your car. Yeah, you're losing you're out on infor- to use information. Your mirrors. Yeah. That's the only way you're supposed to back up. And I, then, yes, check your blind spots. That's it. Well, I mean, the way I. I, I, I told Lauren when she got this car, um, you're not supposed to rely on that backup camera. Yeah. I go, I have a backup camera. The only thing I use for the backup camera is to tell me how close I am to the yeah. object I'm mm-hmm. backing up to. It should beep too, doesn't it? Mine doesn't, but hers some, does. Yeah, some cars do. Most cars do now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, they even come with like those like guiding things to tell yeah. you where your tires are turned. Yeah, and that can be kind of nice, but you know, I get more information out of like my mirrors. Like, do I mean honestly, when I back up, if I know my path is clear. All I'm doing is just looking to my mirrors. That's telling me all the information I need to know to back up. Uh huh. I mean, that's why they're there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I think it's. I just think it's really important. It's something that another thing comes with driving, and I think this is a huge thing that they don't really talk about is comfortability driving. If you're a nervous driver, you're a dangerous driver. Mm-hmm. If you're not comfortable behind the wheel. You're, I think you're more dangerous than somebody that drives wild on the road. I, I, I get that. Uh, I was always nervous if I ever had to drive through Chicago. I was always nervous about Right, which like makes you, not per se a worse driver, but it makes you a more dangerous driver because instead of you worrying about things that you should be worrying about, you're worrying about things that, doesn't, that don't matter. Mm-hmm. Things that aren't happening but could happen is just a terrible, like in any anything you do, like, when you worry about something like that, it's worse. That's why, like, I'll admit it, I'm a fucking lead foot, and I drive crazy. But I'm so comfortable behind my wheel that I feel safe doing so that if I if I realize, like, okay, I'm coming to a situation where I can't be driving like this, mm-hmm. I know when to pull it back. But it's, I feel like I'm so comfortable behind the wheel that I don't, I don't know, I've, I don't want to be that guy that's like, I feel like I'm the best driver in the world. I just feel like I'm a good driver, and I it's the way I drive, too. So, like, if I were to drive, like, 45 miles, 65 miles per hour, like everybody else, most people should and do, as everybody should, I don't. I drive way faster than that, like, down every road. Mm-hmm. If I drove at 45 miles per hour, oh, dude, I'd probably be the fucking greatest driver on the planet. Like, it's so <laughs> weird, because sometimes I'll be, like, driving really fast. And not realize I'm driving fast and I'll lower my speed down to 45 on Mm -hmm. a road. And I'm like, this is how normal people drive. I'm like, this is brutal. Like, it feels like I'm not moving compared to like what I usually drive. There was an app that I wanted to download for. uh, You pretty much download this app on your phone and it tells you how good of a driver you are. Mm -hmm. And what you're supposed to do is. it scores you. Yeah, it scores you. On speed and like. Uh, running red lights and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And pretty much like following the rules. And I was like, man, that's kind of fun because like I really don't speed or anything. I go like maybe five miles above the that's speed normal. limit. And I'm not doing it because I'm nervous. The only thing I'm nervous about is just getting pulled over. No, like that, you should that was... drive the speed limit. That's Driving over the speed limit's not a flex. So, like it's not like I'm like, oh, I can't believe you don't drive over the speed limit. I just have a, I have a tendency of being, I'm a lead foot. That's just mm-hmm. how I drive. And then Five over, I think, is is average for most people because, yeah, it's really hard to hold your car except it, unless you do like cruise control, to a certain speed. Yeah, and cruise control can be very dangerous too because people will like leave their pedals. Oh yeah. On cruise oh control. yeah. They'll just like put their foot down. Yeah, and I don't know. I don't like putting a lot of trust in the machine as mm-hmm. much as. I should, and I say that, but then I'm like, oh, I want a Tesla. That way it can drive me to places. I mean, I wouldn't even use I wouldn't use that thing that much. I don't think I would either, but I would use it from time to time. I think like if I was down on a straight highway. A straight highway. I think that'd be kind yeah. of fun to just kind of put on. You're just a little bit like, 
you're gonna a be, little bit you're more gonna be very very nervous the first like fucking 20 times you do yeah. it because you're just not used to it but but anyways what, what other I... features came in it what was i saying though about the i forget about what i was trying to think we were talking about it oh did i cut you off like a dummy yeah like a freaking idiot Ooh, fucking asshole um what was it i don't remember but uh you know, just like he, she comes with like heated seats now and Bluetooth. Yeah, Bluetooth, and then she can pull up her, which I didn't know my car could do that because I thought like mine had Bluetooth. Yeah, and she has the same like car like radio interface system as mine. Yeah, uh, and that's Chevy for you. Yeah, uh, their uniqueness is gone, but yeah. So. Uh, she, uh, wanted to like, oh, how do you get like text messages to show up on there? I was like, I don't think you can, I don't think you can do that. I didn't think that would be like legal or anything. She's like, no, I saw my friend who also has a Chevy Equinox. She can do it. I go, I looked at the manual. I was like, well, you can't do it through Bluetooth. And then it, there's like a setting for like connected you up to read the text messages or to, like, yeah, to display them. To read or display them like on the screen to be able to read like. Why doesn't the... she just have it so the car reads the text message? I don't know how to set that up, mm. but it didn't sound like it had that feature. But she said, like the text message will show up on that like screen and you can read it and like reply right there on the screen through through your voice replying yeah. like that. I was like, I didn't think that they would allow that because that's taking your eyes off the road to read. Well, apparently they do. She figured it out. So I was like, well, how'd you do that? She's like, you just plugged in like the USB part of it. And I was like, you know, I have the same interface. So I pl plugged my, I actually did it this morning when I got here. I was like, I'm going to try it. Did it pretty much hooked up right away. It wasn't doing that on my old phone. It did it on this one pretty much right away. Hmm. Um, I was wondering if I don't it, like that it displays the text messages. I think I, I don't either. It should just read your text messages. Like, hey, you have a text from so-and-so. Well, I think they might have had problems with that of, like, if you're in a car with somebody and a text message pops, uh, like, like reads out loud. Or just have it off. Yeah, just have it off, I guess, but... I mean, I don't have Bluetooth phone hooked up when I'm when I have people in the car. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just have it turned off. But yeah, I understand what you're saying. Like, well, like it, we Bluetooth. Come, well, what's different if it's displayed right in front of everybody? I, yeah, I know. I, don't I, know. I, I don't It know. sounds dangerous. That's kind of a cool... I didn't know that was a feature. I knew it could read you text. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it could display them. Yeah. Um, I also found out how to get my Google Maps to show up on that big... You know, that LED screen? You know, just doing it that way, I was like, holy cow, I really didn't think that my car was capable of, because they kind of buy these, like, standard, like, work trucks. It just yeah, has those, some... are, those are, like, standard features, though. I mean... Nowadays, yeah. yeah. I mean, they didn't used to have them. Like, the, some of the, our older work trucks in our fleet, they don't have any of that. I mean, it's, a lot of our guys still have, like, the crank wheels until they get an upgrade. Like, in, my, in my work truck, I'm mm -hmm. the only one that has those crank windows. That's the fucking way to do it, though. <laughs> customer comes over to the other window God damn it. yeah yeah <laughs> they're like oh sorry i didn't know you had cranks yeah honestly they should just like to reduce the cost of uh a little bit of cost for the uh work trucks just make the passenger one automatic <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck <laughs> yeah so you're over here like you're over here but then you don't have to lean over to do it. it's just like oh oh it's but it's on your side yeah it's on your the side fuck dude you might as well just make them all uh <laughs> things so uh she got a new car that's exciting how many miles is on it is it used or is it it brand was new? used definitely i'm okay i good man don't buy brand new good man i was gonna i was gonna lose respect for you if you said but, it was uh, new. You only buy a brand new car if you know for a hundred percent fact that you're never gonna get rid of it. Mm -hmm. uh, Even then, it's it's very iffy, and I don't recommend doing it. But uh, I forget the miles I was on it, but it was a pretty fifty thousand. Uh, yeah, I think that's pretty close. That's usually about average for pre-owned mm -hmm. uh, vehicles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My Jetta had 
forty-five thousand when I bought it. Now it's got seventy-two thousand. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was about that much mileage. Now that I think about it, and then, uh, do you like it? Yeah, I love it. I love They're it. Comfortable. Way, way more than her freaking last car. SCV, those fucking CRVs are mm-hmm. dime a dozen. But we got. We also we've been getting some pretty good compliments on how much we got in got for the trade in. Uh, like, what'd you get? I mean, the car was pretty much mint condition. It just just had one hundred eighty thousand miles on it. No, uh, it had quite a bit of bumps and scratches. The interior, the leather, like seats were falling apart. Um, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, but those are minor things. What What'd you guys get for it? Well, would you What would you what, think we got? So for it? when they do trade in values, the only thing they really look at is mileage and is the car functioning. They don't care about if it's clean. They mm-hmm. don't care if the interior looks super nice. They check for if you have major dents and major scratches. Cause I I'll I get a lot for my Jetta, and my Jetta's twenty fucking fifteen. What What year was that car? That was a two thousand and eight. See, the 2008, you probably won't get as much as what I'm expecting. I don't know. You probably got, like, um, 20,000. 15,000. 20,000 for yeah, the 18, trade-in? Yeah. What'd you get for it? 8,000? No. What'd you get? Like, 3,500. 35,000? 35, yeah, that's way higher. No, 3,500. Oh, 3,500? 3, that's a yeah. way lower than what I thought. I'm gonna get like eight, eight, nine grand for mine. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, uh, a lot of people, like family and friends, they've always thought that like, oh, you'll get like two grand maybe or something like that. And no. we took it to one place and they offered like two grand. This other place we went to, they. Why was I thinking three. twenty thousand? Maybe it meant like, like. Were you thinking like two grand? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Because. I was like, what are you talking about? No, I got, I got uh yeah, I'll get uh, nine grand for my Jetta, but it's also manual. Manuals get more money. Oh, uh, okay. Too. Yeah. Because a manual transmission only cost mm. so much. Plus, I only have 70, 72,000 miles on mine. Like I said, they look at miles, they look at function. function. See, and mine slips out a fifth, and I still get uh, nine grand. If it didn't slip out a fifth, guess what the value is on that Jetta? Mm, how much? 12 grand. Really? Yes. That's that much of a repair for it? Huh? Yeah, for it's a transmission to... repair. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, much it cost me probably so. like almost two grand to fix. Jeez. For them to drop the transmission and, and fix the clutch. But if it was an automatic transmission, it'd be like worth just going out and getting a new car. Like an automatic transmission is going to cost you like five, six grand to repair because you have to repair the whole thing. Right. And a clutch, you don't have to repair the entire clutch. So if it's my flywheel, which it is, my flywheel's rubbing, they'll just replace the flywheel. I'll keep the same clutch. And that's a used clutch in that, too. So technically, I have 72,000 miles on it, but it's probably lower because that clutch I got used had, like, um, it had like 3,000 less miles than what I actually had on the car mm-hmm. when I had to get the clutch repaired because I hit that pothole and it ripped the bottom of my clutch off, the casement. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, dude, foreign cars are worth money. Volkswagens hold their value. Everybody's like, oh, the depreciation. Yeah, there's depreciation, but other cars hold higher values than other cars. Mm-hmm. Um, what was that, a Honda? Yeah, Honda. Yeah. I don't think Honda holds a very good value. It's, well, like, they, it's like Kia. They were like super, they were pretty cheap like cars. Honda's cheap cars. Yeah, so. Doesn't mean they're bad. No, it, it was pretty reliable. But it was this just start, it was way way nicer. Yeah, definitely way nicer. I'm I'm really happy for her. 